Hey friends, my name is Bria Katrin. I am a coach in self-directed neuroplasticity for healing from chronic illness. As well as a minister of the gospel, I love Jesus. Gone to Bible college since I got born again and healed. And I love to help people. And I just wanted to make a few videos. This is a third in a series where I'm just talking about three very, they're not all the scriptural principles, that they're three main scriptural principles that got me healed from chronic illness. So if you haven't watched the first two, uh, I talk about some good stuff <laughs> in those first two. And the third right now I want to talk about is based upon, there's a few verses actually that I want to bring up. Lord, where do we start? This is based on trust. This is about learning to trust him and what that means and what that, and what that looks like. Sorry, I'm br bringing up a Bible verse that, um, that I feel like I need to share at some point. So I apologize for that. I don't have that one ready yet. <clears throat> I'm going to, this is a verse, first of all, that I want to bring up. These two verses that I want to share have been so pivotal in my journey of life, not just from healing and in how I coach people to healing. The verses go like this, and then I'm going to just try to unpack this a little bit. But what I want to, before actually, before I share them, this is about trust versus stress, I guess. Trust versus stress. Let's just think about it that way. Trust versus stress and what the outcome is. Yeah. Okay. So Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. This is in the New King James. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Okay. So first let's stop there. Blessed. <laughs> what does that mean? I hope you all know if you're watching me by now that the full blessing that comes for, for us is in every area of our life. We're not talking about just finances. We're talking about health, uh, mental, emotional, physical health, relationship health and prosperity. Yes, financial. I mean, every area of your life, um, just vocationally, whatever it is, impact that you're making, whatever God has got, called you to, that you are blessed, blessed, blessed. You have the, you are a child of the God of the cattle on a thousand hills. He is a big, big God and he has so much blessing for you. So blessed, the one that enters into blessing is the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope, hope is that, that confident expectation that is that gateway to trusting confidence, which is faith. Confident expectation, trusting confidence. <clears throat> Then he gives us a picture of what this actually looks like. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads its roots out by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Okay, so anything to do with trees, uh, it, it always hit me and hits me because I... I studied evolutionary biology. I studied forest ecology at Princeton at Yale. <clears throat> and I know enough about trees to tell you that the way that a tree prioritizes or allocates its resources that it gets, obviously it needs the sun and it needs nutrients and it needs water from the soil <clears throat> and the air. That it, it first will allocate the first amount to maintenance and respiration so it can just continue to survive. So that's the survival mode, right? Then beyond that, there's growth and it starts with upward growth first, vertical growth before it gets to girth, um, to horizontal growth. Eventually we get all the way down the line to guess what? Fruit. So it is the last on the list in turn, reproduction is the last on the list, generally speaking. So when I read this, I was understanding, I was like, this is really cool because God is giving me a picture of someone who trusts in him that basically no matter what season I am in, if it's a year of drought, um, if, if, if there's harsh circumstances like heat for a plant, it's like I'm not even in that. I'm actually having my leaf still green. Like I'm in paradise, like I'm in the garden of Eden and I'm gonna, gonna continue to yield fruit. And then you take that over to what Jesus says in Matthew 13 in the parable of the sower, multiple times there's multiple accounts there where he talks about those four different conditions of the soil, the fourth, and which is our heart and the fourth being the only one that yields fruit, the 30, 60, 100 fold. And that's the one who receives it and, um, 
basically it's not being stolen away because the, the conditions are right. Another message, another day. But the conditions are right, trusting in the Lord, receiving that word, grounding in it, anchoring in it, not letting the cares of the world choke it out. And ultimately it will, that's why it will yield fruit. So that's someone who trusts in the Lord is the one that's going to continue to yield fruit regardless. So what I saw is that, okay, as I'm healing from a maladapted stress response, which is essentially, in my opinion, every single illness out there chronically in the chronic fight or flight, that it is the catalyst or the what's happening in the background. I'm not saying it's somebody's fault that they're just some weak person who doesn't know how to manage stress. That's not what I'm saying at all. People have things happen to them. They are violated. There are injustices that happen. They are not, it's not their fault. I'm not saying that. But at the end of the day, this creates dis-ease in the body and a disease process in the body. But what the Lord is promising me is as I trust in him, I can become this tree. I said, okay, Lord, I want to learn to become this tree. How do I do that? <laughs> So that no matter what is coming, I can prosper. And actually the verse in uh, Psalm 1, which is very similar at the end, uh, talking about the tree, at the end talks says, if I can go there really quickly, that um, what's the beginning of Psalms, basically that you prosper in whatever you do is this same, same tree that we are talking about. <clears throat> he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season and whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. He's saying, okay, you can prosper regardless of the circumstances. That's my blessing on you. So this is a scriptural principle that I had to learn. I said, okay, then this stressed out world that we live in, that everyone is kind of normal. If we've normalized stress and even people say, no, 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 stress isn't sin. I believe it actually is because it's an it's just a symptom of an unrenewed mind. It's, um, it's, it's an indicator of, Hmm. not trusting in God. Ultimately, I'm not blaming anyone. I think sin is just missing the mark and we all miss the mark. I am not saying I'm perfect at this. I have not perfected this. I can tell you in the process that I've gone through my relationship with God, using the tools that I have used beyond getting healed, I have continued to see tremendous growth in that things that come up that cannot get me derailed. Bigger and bigger instances or what you might call trigger points in someone's life and more capacity in my life to stay in peace despite the very busy life that I have. People talk, oh, busyness, busyness. And you end up going through this healing journey. It feels like I gotta, I can't do all of that. Like that's that's crazy the way people live. They're They're stressed out. Maybe some of them are, but somebody like me, and I believe there are other people out there that ultimately my mind is at peace. My heart is at peace. And I'm walking in a greater capacity because I have learned to renew my mind to these truths with God's love and his grace and getting to know him. Again, that foundation that I said that I always have to come back to, which is ultimately learning to receive his love and surrendering over and that the capacity, my capacity continues to grow so that I can actually do more things without getting into my flesh without getting into fear, without getting into stress of the busyness. And I can actually just go through my day in a peaceful way. For the most part, there are things that have absolutely gotten me snagged. And I've grown in those areas. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tribulations. They've been opportunities for me to recognize, okay, let's grow with the Lord in this. Now with trusting God, one thing that people come and they see to me is like, man, I know like I'm just not trusting or I don't know how to surrender. I'm trying and I just can't or all this resistance that's in my brain. Like it's they're 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 seeing themselves as unable to get beyond it, that their brain won't change or or, or they can't surrender. And one thing I want to share with you that I feel like the Lord has revealed to me is that ultimately when we're saying that we're actually you might say, well, I'm not saying I don't trust in Jesus. I'm actually saying I don't believe or trust in myself and my ability. But what you're actually saying then is that God isn't big enough and his love and what he knows about me and what he's promised me, he can't be so big that he can even guide me and help me and heal me through that without me being the one that has to figure it out. He knows you and he's able to guide you in that. If you say, you know what, God, you're this big God who knows me and loves me and knows everything about me. And I don't know how to surrender, but you know how to lead me to surrender because you know how to love me in the way that I don't even know how to love myself. 
And as I started to see that, I was like, okay, then love always wins. Perfect love casts out fear. What is a lack of surrender? What's a lack of trust? What's that brain resistance? It is ultimately fear behind it or stress, if you want to put it in another word. So I felt like God was helping me see that, okay, and biologically speaking, I understood, and I've probably said this in another one of my videos, that oxytocin, which is in the animal world, as I learned, one of the few things at Princeton that I still remember and has helped me is that when baby is born in the mammal world, that mom and baby are both dump out a buttload <laughs> or boatload, maybe that's a better word, of oxytocin, which is called the trust hormone, and that's to help them bond. So I said, okay, I understand that oxytocin is one of these feel-good transmitters out of the four, do dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Then I need that. And that is going to breed trust. And that's what I learned was ultimately such a big part of learning to become this tree is to actually say, you have the ability to do this through your love. I cannot claim anymore that I can't let go because it's not about me trying to figure out how to let go. It's about God leading me through his love. And I went right back again and still do always go back to the firm foundation, always in my life of the rock of Jesus Christ. He's my cornerstone, but it is his love that compels me. It is love, his love that heals. His love never fails. And you can take that to the bank. So that is the third scriptural principle, understanding that I can actually become this tree, that as a born again believer in Jesus Christ, I can walk on this earth in life and peace. He who keeps his mind stayed on the Lord is kept in perfect peace. To be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He gives us a peace that passes understanding. The Holy Spirit, you are filled with the fruit of the Spirit, peace, joy, love, long suffering, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is you. And you have that. And I had to remind myself of these things. There are lots of tools that I help people with, but I hope that that encourages you to say, okay, maybe I need to take a different uh, stance on stress and say, you know what? Some things can come up. It might derail me. I don't have to feel condemned, but I need to recognize these are symptoms of an unrenewed mind. I am not the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord, because otherwise, if there is drought, if there is heat, I, I, nothing would change. I would still be yielding fruit and I would still be green as if nothing's happening and I would prosper in everything that I do. So I hope that that blesses you. That has been a lifelong, I guess, mission and journey. And I just continue to, to bear more fruit in that as I walk with the Lord. God bless.